Hi there, it's Sue, and thanks for joining me for Tips and Talk Day. These are bite-sized topics that I pull from community questions and things that I'm observing in the world of handmade small business. If you'd like to submit a topic, DM me over on Instagram at giftbizunwrapped. Before we get started, I'm going to share a secret with you. One of my superpowers is the ability to get an enormous number of tasks and projects done each and every week. I easily meet deadlines, rarely forget to do something, and know at the start of each day what needs priority attention and action. Type A personality? <laughs> yes. And a follow through on the Kobe assessment, which should have given me the clue. But it wasn't until people started commenting to me that I realized not everyone naturally knows how to do this. It's the biggest single contributor to the growth I always see in my businesses, without spending hours and hours working either. It's about focus and doing the right things efficiently. Prompted by all the questions on how I do this, I went about finding a way to help you perform at a higher level too. I analyzed my methods and formalized my process, which is one many of my coaching clients now also follow. You can use it too. It's all part of a tool called the Inspired Daily Planner, made specifically for gifters, bakers, crafters, and makers. Make no mistake, this is not your ordinary planner. First off, it comes with a video explaining my productivity strategy. And the physical planner isn't dated, so you can start using it the second it arrives at your doorstep. And that's not all. Included for each day is a motivational or business building tip, and plenty of space to capture and book in time for to-dos, scheduled appointments, and all those ideas that are now getting lost. You can watch the video for free and then get your inspired daily planner at giftbizunwrapped.com forward slash inspired. How many customers do you really need to reach your sales goals? Have you ever thought about it? Much less calculated it out for your specific products? Knowing this number can help guide your sales activities and reduce the overwhelm that comes with ambiguity. Not knowing where you'll find people to buy your products and simply leaving things up to chance. This number is also the basis for gaining confidence in your business performance because you can understand and put in place various ways to get the number of customers that you need. As an added bonus, it may prompt you to relook at your pricing, production, staffing, and even materials. My goal today is to help you figure out your own target customer number. It of course varies by the product that you sell and your goals. So your required customer number can and most likely will be different from all the others. I've created two scenarios to demonstrate how to determine your number. I'm sure you'll be able to apply these examples to your own situation and figure out your own desired customer count. To begin with, I've made a couple of assumptions. First off, you've priced your products properly, so you've covered all of your costs and include margin. Second, I'm treating each sale as a single customer, so if someone buys from you twice in a year, it's calculated as two customers. Third, we're focusing here on retail, in other words, direct-to-consumer sales versus wholesale. Four, for this calculation, choose your best selling product. This will give you the most accurate ending number and one you can feel confident with taking action on. Five, all the calculations are set to the goal of $10,000 in revenue a year. I chose this number because it's an easy one to multiply out based on your actual financial goals. And finally, Keep in mind that this is an overall revenue number, not profit. Again, for ease of analysis. All right, here's scenario number one. The product is table runners. I picked this product because it's more likely a one-off sale versus a product that needs to be replenished. 
That's going to come in our second scenario. What you're going to see demonstrated here is the difference in customer count as a price changes. Resourcing Etsy, I found that custom-made table runners go for anywhere from $15 to $50. Let's look at both price points. Dividing $10,000 by your sale price, you would need to sell 667 runners at $15 and 200 runners at $50. Breaking that down into months, on average, you would need to sell 56 runners at $15 and only 17 at $50 each month. Major difference, isn't it? Again, we're working here with an annual number of $10,000 in revenue, so you'd multiply these numbers to match your annual goal. If your target was $50,000, for example, you'd multiply your number by five, and so on. Having these numbers gives you a single product purchase customer count to reach. Another consideration that would lower your number is knowing what percentage of your customers buy again are repeat customers. In this case, maybe a certain number of customers want new runners for every season, or they buy products for gifts, things like that. This is one of the benefits of staying in touch with past customers, like sending emails to remind them about your product and trigger new sales. You'll note that in this scenario, the number of customers required is dramatically different based on your price. I mean, 667 versus 200 is a lot. And remember, each sale comes with other time considerations over production too, like packaging, shipping, customer service interactions. Recently, in podcast episode 393, we talked about how strategically pricing your product has ramifications throughout your whole process. It's actually a good one to listen to for a detailed pricing discussion overall. Now let's look at scenario number two. The product I've chosen here is handmade soap at a $7.50 price point. Calculating the same way we did for table runners at $10,000 annual revenue, you would need to sell 1,333 bars of soap or 444 each month. But hold on, for products like soap, candles, essential oils, bakery items, spices, and maybe yours, a single customer doesn't buy just one. For our soaps here, let's say that for most orders, people buy three at a time. That drops your customer count to only 111 for the year or 37 a month. Am I opening your eyes here? 37 customers a month? Gosh, that could easily be one craft show day. Of course, I know you sell a variety of items. Some month sales are stronger than others and some customer purchases will be more or less than your averages. But running your calculation as I've just described will give you a realistic average number to work with. Now, what do you do with this customer count? It's time to put a plan in place on how you'll attract these customers. Already have a plan? Compare this customer count number to the results that you're seeing with your current plan and make adjustments accordingly. Incorporating multiple ways that people can purchase from you will significantly push your sales in your favor. You don't need to do all the things I'm going to list right here, especially if you're just starting out. But having your own website, selling through an Etsy shop, attending in-person shows, promoting on social media, sending emails, all of these are some of the major streams revenue comes into your business. I know dealing with numbers isn't the most fun activity. I know it isn't for me. But having a grasp on what's required to hit your sales targets gives you direction on ensuring that that will happen. It's the difference between hoping you'll get sales and new customers versus seeing it play out in real life. That's a wrap. I'm a get to the point kind of girl. And this is what you can expect from these quick midweek sessions. Now it's your turn. 
Go out and fulfill that dream of yours. Share your handmade products with us. We want them, and they bring us both so much happiness.